I'm Maggie from BackToTheLandLiving.com and today I want to show you how I built this farmhouse table for under $5. So I built this harvest style farmhouse table for my sister for her birthday and I wanted to, she was building a new house or renovating a house and I wanted to build a table that fit perfectly in the space here and so I made this for her and the reason I was able to build it for only five dollars is because I was able to salvage pretty much all of the materials except for four little L brackets. And so what I did was I used wood that I found in my in-law's barn. It was just old, rough um, lumber, and I was able to smooth it down and build it into this beautiful table. So this table is made out of white ash wood, but if you're building a farmhouse style table for yourself, you can use whatever wood you have. So if you find around your place or somewheres for cheap, a different type of hardwood or even a softwood, you could use that too. Or if you're looking for a cheap option to use, and you don't have any supply, you can't find anything online, second hand from someone, or you don't come by any old barns with some old wood, you could use pine, which is really cheap at the hardware store, and that would make it still a pretty affordable table to build. So I'm just going to walk you through how I made it in case you want to try making one too and just see what I did so you can apply it to yours. If you want to know the exact dimensions of this table and what I did, you can go over to my blog, backtothelandliving.com, and I'll have all the dimensions there for you of everything, all the tools I use, all the supplies I use, and uh, yeah, what my, how big this table is. And so, um, to build this table, the first thing I did was get my materials together. So, I got, brought my wood up to my grandparents' shop, and then I started building. And so, the first thing that I did was I needed to square up my boards. So, my boards were quite old. They had a live edge on them. They were rough. And so, I needed to square them up. And so, what I did was I took a strip of wood that was nice and straight and screwed it to the side of the live edge and then ran that through the table saw to clean up the other side and then did the same. I took the screws out, took that guide off, flipped it over and sawed off the other live edge just to start squaring up my boards. And so that was a nice way just to get it a roughly square. And so next what I did was I ran it through a planer. And so this was to help take the bow. So my boards have been sitting in a barn for probably 30 years. And so they were bowed and I needed to take that out to make a nice flat tabletop. And so I ran mine through a planer quite a few times. But if your boards are nice and flat, you do not need to do that step. And if you don't have a live edge, you don't need to take that off either. And so I ran through a planer and then that got it flatter. And then I ran it through a joiner. And the reason I did this was because, again, they were... Um, Kind of rough and the edges were not flat so I ran it through the joiner to flatten up that one side and then I took it back to the table saw to square off the other and this made a nice square board for me to work with but if you are buying your wood from a store or you get a board that's already nice and square like most of the time it's pretty close you won't need to do these steps you'll still want to run your boards through the table saw just to clean up the edges so that you can put them nice and close together when you're building the top so the next thing I did was I started building the top. So what I did was I glued the top together. So I laid out my pieces all the way I wanted them and then I put the wood glue on. I had initially used like some wood glue and a roller but honestly my finger just worked better. So I just put some on spread around your finger and put your table together. And so how I did this was I used some clamps. So you're going to definitely need some clamps for this. I used some longer pipe clamps to hold this together width wise. And then I used some C clamps to hold it down to the table it was sitting on. So even though I had planed it, my boards are old and they were kind of bowed. And so holding it down just held everything level. But you're going to want to just clamp it down really good, have it held really nice and tight together so that the glue can dry and hold it solid. And so I left it to, uh, with the glue to dry for about two days and I let it dry completely. And then I went and took off my clamps and it held pretty good. So to square up the ends, what I did was I took a straight edge, I used a long ruler, and I ran a circular saw along it. And just to clean up the rough end, because my boards weren't the same length and things, and I wanted it to be nice and straight so that I could put the last board on really and have it nice and flush. And so I cut off the ends with the saw, and then I put some glue on my end board and glued it on. 
and I did that on both ends and then because I didn't have any clamps that were long enough to clamp it lengthwise I used some ratchet straps I put them around the tabletop lengthwise and ratchet them up and then just let it set for a few days and held until the glue could harden and so after I left it for a few days I took off all my clamps and it had held pretty good I then moved on to sanding it and so I sanded it for a few evenings try to get it nice and smooth and so I used a coarse, um, low grit sandpaper at first to get off the rough parts and then I moved to a finer grit sandpaper and so you want to sand it nice and good, I want it to be nice and smooth and I just sanded it quite a bit until it was smooth as I wanted and then I moved on to making the base of the table. So for the base of the table I used four legs and four start pieces and then some brackets um, and braces. And so what I did was I measured out my legs and cut them to length and things. And then I took my tabletop and flipped it upside down so I was working on the bottom of the table. And then I built the leg pieces and the skirt pieces on the bottom of the table. And so I had them all cut to length. So what I did was I measured out where I wanted my screws to go and I drilled some pilot holes so that it wouldn't split the wood, which is a good thing to do. And so I, what I first did was I screwed my skirt pieces to my leg pieces and I had them all measured out nicely and I screwed them together. And then the next thing that I did was I screwed my middle braces to the actual tabletop. And so for this I used some 2 by 2s just some pine that was sitting around the shop that was left over. And I cut them to the right length and I screwed them to the tabletop. Now you want to be really careful with this. You want to make sure that your screws are the proper length depending on how thick your wood is so that you do not go through the top of your table with your screws. So be super careful with that. So I screwed the braces to the tabletop. I put three of them across the middle. And then from there I used a nail gun to nail the skirt pieces to those middle braces. And that just held it nice and secure. And it also, by not using any screws on the outside, you can't see any screw marks on the skirt from the outside. And so I did that to hold it all together. And then I also what I did to make it nice and secure was I used some L brackets. There's some metal L brackets from the store, which is the only thing I actually bought for this whole table. I think they were like $3. And so I used them just to make it nice and strong on the table. And I put them uh, between the skirt pieces and the leg pieces on each of the corners. And so I had that to keep it secure, I had the middle braces to keep it nice and secure, and then the final thing I did was I made some corner brackets um, out of wood, and so there was an extra brace. And so I cut these at the right angle for each corner, and nailed them to the skirt, and then I also screwed them to the tabletop, and I also screwed them to the legs. And that was all of the support I had for this table, so it kept the table nice and strong, and it also kept everything nice and square. And so after I had the legs and the skirt and all the braces on, I moved on to finishing up the final steps of the table. And so what I did here was I did some varnishing. And so I just used a clear wood varnish to cover the whole table just to have it nice and sealed. And what I did was I did three coats and in between each coat I sanded it lightly. And so I put a coat on, let it dry, sand it off because um, when you put the varnish on it will kind of bring out the grain of the table. So I sanded that back down then cleaned it off so there was no dust, and then put another coat on, so I did that three times. worth of evenings, not every evening, just when I had time, um, I went up into the shop and worked on it. And it also helped that I had some people give me an extra pair of hands sometimes. My dad and my husband and my grandfather helped every now and then. And so it was nice because sometimes it's hard to do it all by yourself. So it's nice if you have someone else to help you out. But pretty much this is how I built this table. But if you have different materials or different things you're working with, everything will change a little bit. But the basic concept will still be the same.
So that's how I built this harvest style table for under five dollars. If you have some avail uh, materials available to you or do some salvaging and are resourceful, you can build a harvest table too for pretty cheap. So let me know how it goes if you try one. And thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.